He's worthy of all the praise. Amen. Let's all stand for the reading of the word. The Bible tells in Exodus chapter 14, and let's go to verse 13. Exodus chapter 14, and let's go to verse 13. The Bible says this, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, and stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you. Turn to your neighbor and tell him the Lord will fight for you. And you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Turn to your neighbor and tell him go forward. But lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea, and divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the heart of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get me glory upon Pharaoh, and upon all the host, and upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh and upon the chariots and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud went before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp and the Egyptians and the camp of the Israelites. And it was a cloud of darkness unto them, but it gave light by night to thee so that the one came not near the other all night. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer and ask him to bless this preaching here today. Amen. Let's pray. Jesus, Lord, we give you the honor, the glory, God, right now. We ask you, Lord, to stretch forth your hand that your name may be uplifted, that you may be praised, God. Speak through your servant right now here today. God, give us a word. Thank you for giving us the word, God, that we may go ahead and Present it, Lord, the way you gave it to us. We thank you. We love you. We give you all the honor and all the glory in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody give God a round of applause. It's all right. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. I want to thank the Lord, amen, for allowing us to be here today. It is a privilege to be in the house of the Lord. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost here today. With the evidence of speaking in other tongues. How many believe that here today? Come on, somebody. How many believe that here today? Lord, have mercy. God's going to fill somebody with the Holy Ghost. And God's going to heal somebody here today. Amen. You came sick and afflicted. God's going to heal you today. Turn to your neighbor and tell him God's going to do it. Amen. If you came with a spirit of expectation then God is about to do it. But if you came just to sit back and be a spectator, God ain't going to do nothing for you because you got to have the spirit of expectation that God is going to do something in your life. Come on, somebody. Give God a round of applause here today. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just thank the Lord for his mercy and his grace. God is so good. Amen. God, uh, God was dealing with Moses uh, on this uh, situation, um, chapter 13 and 14. And God was dealing with Moses in a certain way. Uh, the title of this, of my sermon here today, is Stop Declaring, Amen, and Just Do It. Stop Declaring and Just Do It. We need declaration, definitely. We definitely need declaration. We declare it, amen. We thank the Lord for it. Amen. De uh, declaration is uh, announcing it, pronouncing it, that it's going to come to pass. But some of us have been declaring for too long that you need some action behind your declaration. Can you say amen, church? Some of you have been praying too much, and you need to have some action behind your declaration. Amen. So I want you to understand that here God was dealing with Moses in, this, uh, in Genesis, in Exodus, where he was dealing with him in an area where God was taking him to places, different places in his life. We know the story where he met lo the Lord 
in a burning bush. And when he met the Lord in a burning bush, the Lord started to speak to him and declare unto him what he was going to do. And I want you to understand that Moses, amen, in his heart and his mind, amen, didn't even comprehend, let alone be the deliverer of Israel. He couldn't understand it nor comprehend it, yet he didn't understand what was inside of him. He couldn't understand what the power that God was going to use, use him for his honor, for his glory. Couldn't comprehend it, couldn't understand it. This is one of the reasons why in the 13th chapter, he is always talking to God back and forth. And God is telling him, as a matter of fact, God even gets a little upset with him and tells him, hey, I made your mouth and I made you. Amen. I just need you to do it. Amen. You just, I just need you to be obedient and do what I want you to do. And the Bible tells us that here he goes uh, to the place reluctantly and he still does it. There's, there's something about when God is speaking to you to do something that fear gets a hold of your heart and in your mind. Can you say amen, church? Amen. I don't know about you, but sometimes the Lord tells me to do something and fear gets a hold of me because of the people. Amen. What if the people say this and what if they say that and what if I don't look right and what if I don't look this way? I'm here to tell you that God don't do it your way. He does it his way. Can you say amen, church? I'm here to tell you that God does it his way. And the Bible tells us that here he goes to a place and he starts to say, wait a minute, uh, I want you to uh, start declaring and I want you to start doing. And the Bible tells us that he goes to Pharaoh and he starts declaring what God wants. He says, let my people go. And he continues to keep going back and over and over again to the point where he starts to do small miracles. And God says, okay, throw your rod down. It'll turn into a snake. And he swallows the other two. And he says, go ahead and tell him and declare these things. And God is taking him to a process in his life where God is trying to set him up for the, for the main event in his heart and his mind so that God can take him to the next level of his walk with the Lord. And I want you to understand that most of the time when God is dealing with you, it's so that you're going through some trials and some tribulations and you're encountering some stuff in your life that you're going to have to go against opposition in order for God to get you to the next level of your life. Can you say amen, church? So I want you to understand that not all the time it's going to be good. God starts to deal with you in a place where you have never been before. He starts dealing with you in a place that you have never sought before. Uh, there's going to be a time where God's going to want you to pray more than 10 minutes. There's going to be a time where God wants you to pray more than 20 minutes then a half an hour, then 45 minutes, maybe an hour. God's going to come to you and say, come on, I need you to get to the place where you need to be because I need something that's, that's going to come and take place in your life, and you got to be ready and prepared for what God is going to do in your life. Can you say amen, church? you got to learn how to handle it. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, you got to handle it. you got to learn how to handle what God is going to do. And here the Bible tells us that here Moses comes to a place where God is instructing him and in how to do it and what to do. It is something different because he grew up in the palace. And when he grew up in the palace, he had everything at his becking need, everything he wanted. And he would just ask for water and they would bring him water. Amen. They would bring it on a gold tray and they would bring it in a gold cup. And he would drink the water and say, I don't want no more water. Go ahead, take it away. And they would take it away. Amen. The Bible says he grew up with Pharaoh and he grew up with everything that he needed. He didn't have to go to the field. He didn't have to work in the field. He didn't have to do any of these things. He just would declare it, speak it, and it would come to pass. Can you say amen, church? So I need you to understand that when God, when he killed this man and went out of Egypt and he went into the wilderness, he was going to an area that he did not understand. He didn't understand what the plant was. He didn't understand that you can get water out of, out, of a, out of a cactus, a nopal. He didn't understand that you can do this and you can eat it. You can go and do this. He didn't, say, he didn't know how to prepare stuff. He knew how to eat it, but he just didn't know how to prepare it. Can you say amen, church? 
So I want you to understand that God's going to take you to a place that there's a process in your life that God's going to have to take you through that you don't understand and you can't comprehend in most times. You're going to think that God's against you, but he, God is trying to teach you something in order to take you to the next level and declare some blessings in your life. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, get ready. You're going to have to get ready for God to do something in your life. And the Bible tells us that here he comes to the point in his life where now there is arguing, there is murmuring, there is complaining. If you read the top of the chapter, of course not right now, but in your own time, you can see that the people start to complain and murmur because they just come out of Egypt. And as they come out of Egypt, they're starting to murmur and complain because they get into this area where it is kind of difficult in the position of where they're at. As a matter of fact, even Pharaoh quotes and says they've been pinned down in this area and they can't move, so we're going to go and attack them. As a matter of fact, they come to a point where they're saying, man, we're stuck. And see, when God takes you to a place where you're stuck, God's about to do a miracle in your life. Come on, somebody. God's about to do something in your life. You can't be talking about it, declaring about it. Now it's time for you to do something for God's honor and God's glory. Can you say amen? So the Bible tells us that Pharaoh comes and he says, I, we got them trapped. Let's go to them and let's see what we got. You know, what is interesting to me is that when you find yourself in a predicament and you find yourself in places that are tight, it's because God wants to squeeze some stuff out of you. It's time for you to get faith and come out of you. You got faith in other things, and God wants you to have faith in him and trust in him like you do in other things. We declare other things. We declare declaring is something and pronouncing. You declare that you're sick. You declare you're even getting sick. Does anybody know what I'm talking about in the house? You feel a little sick and you start declaring that you're actually sick. You start even looking at Monday of not going to work because you're feeling sick. Does anybody know what I'm talking about in the house? All of a sudden, you're already calling in. You already see yourself calling in and doing the fake cough. <coughs> Does anybody know what I'm talking about in the house? You see yourself doing all of this already and you're declaring it in your mind what you shouldn't be doing, but yet you know that you can just stand up against it. When you start declaring these things, amen, all of a sudden now you become it because you start speaking it. The Bible tells us that the, the power is in the tongue and that you got to understand that when you start speaking these things, amen, you can clarify and declare some stuff in your life that don't even belong long in your life this is why you're supposed to say greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world I, I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me today is the day that the Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad in it you got to declare some stuff and start putting your feelings and your emotions to one side because you got power in the tongue turn to your neighbor and tell him you got power you got power when you start speaking. There's somebody, you know, you ever come across somebody that's always negative? I mean, don't say no names, but they're constantly negative. When they wake up, they're negative. When they go in the afternoon, they're negative. Amen. The cheese, the, the, the lettuce was touching the cheese and it just didn't make their, their lunch great. And they got to change the bun and everything else. And everything is negative. Everything is always negative. In the evening, it's negative. Nobody cleaned the house. Nobody cleaned this. The car is not clean. Everything is negative. When you start speaking in a negative fashion, it's because you can't declare anything. Thing, you just declare the negativity can you say amen church 
When you start declaring the negativity, then it's because you have no hope and you have no hope up ahead and you have no kind of vision that's going to happen. If you had a vision, you would put that negativity to one side and you say, God, I got to get this place cleaned up. I got to go ahead and start cooking right. I got to start doing things right in the eyes of the Lord. If you had a vision, you would not be wasting your time with all the little stuff and you would start wasting your time and start doing something for God's honor and glory. Can you say amen, church? So you got to understand that the Bible tells us that they were murmuring and complaining, the Israelites. Prior to them coming to the Red Sea, the Bible tells us that here they're at the sea. And here God's about to do a miracle. And here Moses has been declaring and he says, stand still, Israel. God's about to do a miracle. I want you to see what God is about to do. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, stand still. Moses get to the point where he is doing certain things, but he's not done a big thing yet. Now God is taking him and telling him, and now there's fear and there's afraid and there's all kinds of friction. As a matter of fact, people, when you're about to do a miracle, there's all kinds of criticism that's going to happen. People will come against you. Amen. Your own feelings, your own emotions will come against you. Amen. Everything will come against you because you're all of a sudden going and doing the, the supernatural and you're not doing the natural anymore. You're doing God's will and then what's happening is the natural all of a sudden starts to criticize the supernatural which is God's will. And I'm here to tell you that even yourself will criticize certain things that might not happen. But I'm here to tell you that you can put that to one side and have faith in the Lord and Jesus is going to do a miracle in your life when you believe. This is why the Bible says that when Jesus walked up to the fig tree and he said he came up to the fig tree and there was no fruit on the fig tree, he cursed the tree. It doesn't matter how you feel. The Bible says that it wasn't its season yet. I'm here to tell you, it don't matter how you feel, even though it's not your season, you got to produce some fruit for Jesus. You got to produce something for the Lord. Can you say amen, church? You got to produce something for God's honor and God's glory. You got to do something and let God do what he has to do in your life. So you need to understand that when God takes you to a place of understanding and and you try to understand what God is doing, God's going to allow you to step out by faith. You got to step out. Turn to your neighbor and tell him you got to step out. It's easy to direct everyone else. It's easy to tell everyone else what they need to do. But when it comes to you, you need to start stepping out. Turn to your neighbor and tell him you need to do it. Don't, don't, don't counsel me and then all of a sudden you don't do it. You got to counsel me and take your own counsel. Can you say amen, church? Come on, somebody give God a round of applause. That's all right. And you got to understand that we got to declare some stuff. Moses came to a point where he was declaring some stuff. He was doing some things there. And yet God was using him for his honor and for his glory. But he came to a point in the scripture where God tells him, where he says, why do you come to me? He tells him that because now he's telling him, I giving you the power, I giving you the authority, I giving you the, the abundance of power and strength, I need you to start doing it and I need you to step out. According to this verse, the Bible tells us that Jesus tells him, why do you come to me? Why are you coming to me and asking me when God already gave him the instructions? You got to understand that God already gave you the instructions. Nine times out of ten, you know what to do, you just don't do it can you say amen church nine times out of ten we already know what to do we just don't do it turn to your neighbor and tell them just do it it's very difficult for you because you declare some stuff but then when you declare it you just look at it and say well I don't know if I'm going to do it you know you got to have a plan already And you got to have a vision already that God is going to go ahead and bless you in this vision. That means that God's going to do his part, but you got to do your part. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, do your part. 
You can say it all you want, but if you don't get prepared, amen, lack of preparation is a lack of faith. You got to get ready. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, get ready. Come on, somebody, if you're looking for a husband, you got to get ready. I wish I had a sister that believed that here today. (laughs) If you're looking for a husband, you got to get ready. I was weak. Lord, have mercy. All right. <laughs> we won't go there. <laughs> if, if you're looking to get married, brother, you got to get ready. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. I got some brothers in the house. <laughs> that means you got to have a job. <laughs> Trying to get married with no job. Come on, somebody. You need to have a job. You need to go and do something. You got to get ready. You got to get prepared. You got to go ahead and get a car at least. You can't be on the Batamobile. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Here, I got you a skateboard. I got mine my skateboard, and I got you a skateboard, and we can skateboard together down the street. Come on, you got to get ready. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, get ready. Come on, you got to get some funds in your pocket. Amen. You can't be going to McDonald's. Amen. You got to take her out, brother. I wish I had a witness in the house. Lord, have mercy. I want you to understand that people need to get ready. You got to get prepared. A lack of preparation is a lack of faith. You got to get ready. So if you declare you're going to be a millionaire, then you got to start working to become a millionaire. I wish I had a witness in the house. If you declare that you're going to buy a house, then you got to get ready to buy a house. If you declare that you're going to buy a car, you got to get ready that you're going to buy a car. There has to be some action behind your declaration. Can you say amen, church? So I want you to understand that when God was dealing with Moses, amen, in the 15th chapter, he goes to Moses and you can put it up. It says this. And the Lord said unto Moses, wherefore criest thou unto me? It's a question. Why are you crying unto me? Why, do you, why are you coming to me now? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forth. But lift up thy rod. He's telling him, look, I need you to go and stop declaring what I'm telling you. And I need you to put some action behind it. Can you say amen, church? You're going to have to put some action behind it. You've been declaring that your, your wife is going to be okay. You've been declaring that your husband's going to be all right. You've been declaring that your children are going to be okay. That means you've got to come to the house of the Lord and be thankful unto the Lord and uplift the name of the Lord and give him an offering of your sacrifice, which is your reasonable service. That means that you've got to thank the Lord. For already doing it. You don't keep asking him over and over again. All you got to do is ask him once. And then you got to come and thank him because it's already done. I wish I had somebody that understood what I'm talking about. You got to have some action behind it. And then expect for it to come to pass. Now if God is telling you go over here and go over there. And he's telling you to go ahead and move this out of the way. And move this stone out of the way. Because I'm about to go ahead and bring what was dead into your life. And bring it to pass and it's going to resurrect. Amen. God's going to use you for his honor and his glory. And it's time for you to go ahead and start moving for God to do something in your life can you say amen church so now Moses is at a point where he is between the Red Sea and he is between the Israelites and he has murmurs and complainers in the back of his ear and he's, can, he's listening to them but he's listening to God more can you say amen church I mean you have to be careful who you listen to Turn to your neighbor and tell him, be careful. Amen. You got to listen to the voice of God. The Bible tells us that here he gets to the place where now he starts to declare. And God starts to show him instructions and tell him, this is what you need to do. You need to start stretching forth the rod. And I need you to start speaking. And I need you to start saying it. When you do this, then it activates something in me. 
When you start speaking it and you start having action behind it, then I start opening up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you cannot contain. You got to start paying some stuff. You got to start doing some stuff. You got to have some action behind it in order for me to go ahead and bless you. He said, okay, Peter, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. When you start speaking it, I'm going to go ahead and say it, and it's going to be established in heaven. When you start doing it, now all of a sudden heaven is moving with you. Amen. The power of God is moving with you. I'm here to tell you that some of you are still working on the signs, wonders, and miracles, but you got to step out by faith and say, devil, you're a liar. Even though I feel awkward and I don't feel good, I'm going to step out by faith and trust in the Lord that God is sending me. God is going to do something great in my life and I'm going to be a doer instead of a hearer in the last days. Can you say amen, church? You can't be thankful unto the Lord and not come to prayer. Can you say amen, church? You can't be thankful unto the Lord and not come. You, you, you're so thankful that you do come. I wish I had a witness in the house. <laughs> you come to the house of the Lord because you're thankful for what God is going to do in your life and you start stretching out your hand and saying God I know by faith this is already done I got to do my part in order for you to be get all the honor and all the glory I'm here to tell somebody that God's about to move on your behalf but you got to step out by faith and trust in God can you say amen come on somebody give God a round of applause He comes to, he comes to the, the point where God is doing something in his life and he has to start doing, he has to start stepping out. And when he starts stepping out, God starts to do something great in his character and his attitude that he has. Something shifts where you start having confidence in the Lord and it's no longer fearful, but it's confidence in God. Some of you are not there yet. You still got to get confidence in the Lord. And I'm here to tell you that when you get there, you don't ever want to go back to the fear and the anxiety. You want to go back to the confidence that you have in the Lord and you trust in the Lord and you put God first. When you have confidence in God, you speak crazy. Can you say amen, church? I'm not talking about worldly crazy. I'm talking about supernatural crazy. You say, hey, you know what? God's going to bring this and God's going to bring my son. God's going to bring my daughter. God's going to do this and God's going to bring this miracle and God's going to do this. And you're expecting, you're talking a crazy miracle. You're talking crazy faith. You're not stuck on the murmuring and complaining of what you cannot change because we come to the realization that you can't change anything. That it's only God that can change something and you go to God that can change something in your life and God is the only one that can change it. I'm here to tell you God can change your husband. God can change your wife. God can change your children. God can change anybody that you put in the presence of Almighty God. And you got to understand that you have to stop declaring and stop, start doing it. Amen. Some of us keep saying it, but God told him, hey, stop saying it and don't come to me. Just start doing it. What I need from you is I need action. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, do action. Some action going. Amen. You can tell them that you love them, but you need action behind everything. Can you say amen, church? You can say that to your kids that you love them, but you need action behind them. You need actions behind everything that you're doing. And you got to understand that when God takes you to that place, he was looking at the disciples say, wait a minute now that I died on the cross for you. I went and sacrificed for you. I need action behind that. 
There's action that's going to take place in your life after you go ahead and understand what God has done. There comes a responsibility to say God has picked me up and turned me around and he's given me a life much greater than my own life that I had. Amen. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. He's more been more good to me than I have to my own self. I'm here to tell somebody that the Lord wants to see how thankful you are unto the Lord. When someone's thankful, you won't backslide because you're so thankful, thanking God for what he's picked you up and turned you up, turned you around from, that you'll start giving God the honor and the glory right in front of everybody. You don't care who's around. You don't care what's happening around you. You'll start giving God praise and you start giving God worship. Why? Because you're declaring it. Not you're only declaring it, but now you're doing it and you're giving God everything that rightfully belongs to the Lord. Can you say amen, church? So I want you to understand that the Bible tells us that we have, we have inside of our vessels, inside of us, we have a powerful thing inside of us. According to uh, 1 Corinthians, the Bible tells us that we have, 2 Corinthians, amen, the Bible tells us that here we have some things that are inside of us. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5 through 10 says this, For we preach not of ourselves, but Christ, Jesus Christ of ourselves, your servant. It says, For Jesus' sake, for God, who commanded the light to shine in darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have the treasures in earthly vessels, that the excellencies of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body, dying, uh, dying of the Lord Jesus. It says that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. The Bible's telling us this. He's saying Jesus Christ didn't die just to die. He died so that you could have life and have it more in abundance. He said, now when I filled you with the power and the glory of the Holy Ghost, I've given you some power and I've given you some anointing. And I've given you some stuff, not just so that you can go back home and do nothing, but I've given you power so that you can go ahead and start doing something out in the world. Praying for somebody, bringing them to the house of the Lord, laying hands on the sick and they shall recover i need you not to be messing around with the little things i need you to get up and start doing something for god's honor and god's glory the problem was with the israelites is they wallowed in the same sorrow and they wallowed and they said didn't we tell you that you brought us to a place to die he said, we told you, Moses, that you brought us to a place to die. Do you know that when you find yourself in a place, a predicament, where you can't go anywhere and your own strengths and your own abilities, God is trying to say, I'm going to do a miracle in your life. You just got to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I'm here to tell you that some of you are between a rock and a hard place right now. And God is saying, just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. It's not your doomsday. It's your beginning of a blessing and the beginning of the supernatural that's going to happen in your life. God wants to do something in your life. Can you say amen, church? You got to understand you're always going to have the haters coming against you. You'll always have people that are going to come against you when you go totally different. Moses was so engulfed in the things of the Lord that he wanted to know more about God. He wanted to understand the goodness of God that people couldn't understand and comprehend his attitude and his character. To the point where they started to say, wait a minute, you brought us here to die and you brought us here. It was two different worlds. You got to understand that when you come inside of the kingdom of God, God's going to take you to different places that people ain't going to like. 
And when they take you, when God takes you to a different place, people, your best friend ain't going to understand you. Amen. Your mama, your daddy ain't going to understand you. Your husband won't understand you. Your wife won't understand. Your children will not understand you because it's about you and Jesus in the house. It's between you and God. I'm here to tell you that God wants to take you to the next level. When you start getting into that place, you speak crazy stuff. You say, God's going to make a way out of no way. God's going to bring some money. God's going to bring this uh, and we're going to step out by faith and trust in the Lord. I wish I had a witness in the house that understood that it's only God that can do it. Can you say amen, church? And I want you to understand that when God starts to deal with Moses, he has to go to the next level. When you get to the next level, you don't want to go back down. Can you say amen, church? You want to go back down. You want to get to the next level. How many people are hurting financially and then they get to a level where they can breathe? They don't want to go back down. Anybody know what I'm talking about in the house? You don't ever want to go back down. You just want to continue to keep going. And plus, you want to see what you can do even more so to be financially secure. Can you say amen, church? That's the same exact thing. You need to understand that when God takes you to a place, in a spiritual place, he takes you to a spiritual place where you understand that the little things don't bother you anymore. Amen. This one doesn't bother me no more. Amen. They're talking about me. So what? I don't care. Amen. That's not the first time. It's not the last. I'm here to tell you that you can go ahead and do away with the haters, but you got to understand that you only care about what one says and that his name is Jesus. His name is the one that you got to glorify and uplift the name of the Lord. It's Jesus on the main line. The Bible tells us that Pharaoh gets to the place where he thinks he has them. You know how, how, how crazy it is and the enemy thinks that he has you and he got you trapped and then God just comes and delivers you and sets you free. It's only by the grace of God that God will do something powerful in your life. You can't do it. You have to step out by faith. You got to come to the altar and say, Lord, here I am. Hey, Amen. I remember there was this one woman that was in the back of the pew. And the, the, the preacher said, well, if you come up to the altar, God will heal you. And her fight mind, she was saying, well, God can heal me right here. But uh, God was looking for her obedience. Come on, somebody. God's looking for your obedience, for you just to obey what God has. He said, if you believe, all things are possible. If you just believe it and step out by faith, all things are possible. Amen. Your mama's coming. Your daddy's coming. Your brother's coming. Your sister, your dad, your brother, and everybody's coming to the house of the Lord. You got to believe it. You got to start planting seeds inside of their heart and bring them to the house of Almighty God. It's time for you. And you got to understand that what God was doing was so powerful. The Bible says that here Jesus gets the disciples, comes to the place where he preaches to them on the ground, on earth, and then he takes them on sea. And he tells them, practice this now. I need you to practice. The Bible says winds came and all of a sudden they got fearful, went down to Jesus. Jesus, don't you care that we're going to die? He says, man, he rebuked the wind. He said, oh, ye little faith. He's trying to talk to them and explain to them that if you even tell the tree and curse the tree, he tells them you can do the exact same thing. Tell the mountain to be cast into the sea. He says, if you believe, all things are possible. He said, you got to understand, get out of this function, out of the area of murmuring, complaining, and get into the place where God is going to move in a supernatural if nobody shows up, you showed up. I wish I had a witness in the house. If nobody shows up and you call a meeting, you showed up. You got to start stepping out by faith and you got to let go and let God do what he has to do in your life. There's a reason why nobody showed up. It's time for you to step out and say, God, I'm going to do it for your honor and for your glory. It's not for the people. Can you say amen, church? I need you to understand that when God starts to deal with you, it is something that he wants to take you to the next level of your life. And when God starts to do that, there's fearful things that happen in your life. 
there are things that get a hold of you to the point where it is difficult for you to understand some stuff. When you don't understand it, fear tries to get a hold of you. And you got to tell the devil, devil's a liar. I'm going to trust in God. I remember so clearly. I remember the pastor calling me and telling me to go pray for somebody that was demon possessed. I said, Lord, have mercy. I don't think you have the right minister. Amen. He told me to go and pray for somebody. He said they're levitating off of the bled, off the bed. I definitely know you got the wrong minister. Amen. I went down there. Music, please. Went down there. And I started going and I started thinking, man, anybody ever had this, these ideas that you're going to a place and you really don't want to go? That if there's a flat tire or an accident and it stops you along the way? Does anybody know what I'm talking about in the house? I'm just being too transparent with you then. <laughs> flat tire, two flat tires. That way we don't have a spare to fix it. Anyways. <laughs> so then what happened was I was going and uh, I was thinking, you know, something could happen. And I told the brother, you're going to go in there and you're going to pray. He said, well, uh, he said, brother, you're the minister. I said, brother, you're the deacon. You just listen to what the minister says. Amen. I get there and we're fearful, not of the unknown, of what, what God is going to do, what's going to happen. And all of a sudden, a boldness comes over me in the parking lot. Uh, as I'm getting off the car, I'm going into the house, a boldness comes over me where the fear just dissipates. And I'm knocking on the door. I'm running towards the door to knock on the door and bust the door open and say, where is she? Because the Lord is looking for you to step out by faith. I wish I had somebody that understood that God is looking for you to step out by faith first and then he'll open the door for you. Then he'll fix. Some of you want God to fix it first and then you'll step out by faith. When God is saying, I need you to step out by faith, and then I'll meet you there. And I will help you, and I will uplift you, and I'll never leave you, and I'll never forsake you. And I will help you to get to the place that you need to get. I remember so clearly we went in there and prayed for the girl. She started getting the Holy Ghost, got baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy I'm here to tell you that the devil is a liar. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I need somebody to step out by faith and trust in God. Your actions speak louder than your words. We can say we love God. But your love shows how much you love God by your actions. Your actions, how much you pray. It takes courage to step out by faith. It takes courage to get a hold of God. A hey, brother and sister, friend of mine today, anybody can do whatever the world is doing. But it takes courage to come to the morning prayer. It takes courage to trust in the word of God. It takes courage to trust in God with all your heart. It takes courage to say, I'm going to be different. I'm not going to be the same. I'm not going to do the same thing that I used to. I'm going to do what God wants me to do. It takes courage to trust in God with all your heart and all your mind. here to tell you that God is looking for somebody to step out by faith and trust in the Lord with all their heart because he already knows what's inside of you mama daddy you already know what's inside of your daughter and you already know what's inside of your son the strong man in there anybody know what I'm talking about in the house does anybody know what I'm talking about in the house How many have a man of God in their house? A son. How many have a son that's a man of God? Pastor, he's four years old. He's still a man of God. I'm here to tell you. Come on, somebody know what I'm talking about in the house? How many know that you have a woman of God in your house? You got your daughter that's there. She's a woman of God. How many know this by faith that they're already there? Ah, God already knows what's inside of you. I'm here to tell you, you got to step out by faith and you got to start practicing what God wants you to do. Let's all stand. 
Listen to me. Listen to me, church. You got to train them on purpose. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, train them on purpose. If you train your kids on purpose, God is trying to show you what you need to do in the supernatural. Let me break this down so you understand. When you have your kids, you got to, the Bible says your kids are like arrows in the quiver. And when you pull out the arrow, you can point it any which way you want and let it go. You want them to be a doctor? Let them be a doctor. You want them to be a preacher? Let them be a preacher. You want to be a lawyer? Direct them that way. It has to be on purpose. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, on purpose. You don't, if you're living this life and saying, they're just going to grow up and see what happens. You're crazy. Something's wrong with you. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to direct them exactly where to go. I had my children and told me, you're going to be men of God. God's going to use you. God's going to do something great in your life. And then I had to train them how to become men of God and a woman of God. You got to understand that your house got to get ready. You got to get prepared. You got to get everything ready. When a champion is going to box, he got to get everything ready in the house. And he got to get ready everything in the gym. He got to go ahead and fight with this. He got to train this way. He got to train that way. And you can't even let him eat certain things. You can't let him go ahead and do certain things. You can't let him act a certain way. He has to become a champion. I'm here to tell you that you got to get your house in order if you want men of God and women of God to do something for God's honor and God's glory. Get your house in order. Church your neighbor and tell them, get your house in order. God was trying to show Moses, Moses, I needed to be trained. Train the people to trust in me. Train them to show me, to show me that they can go ahead and move forward. I need you to train them. I need you to help them push them forward, get them to a place where they need to be, where they learn how to trust in me, Moses. Can you say amen, church? Church, who wants to get to the next level of your life? Who wants to be doers and not just talking about it, but it's time to do it. It's time to take action and start doing something for God's honor and glory. Come on, would you lift up your hands right there where you're at? Would you love the Lord with me right there where you're at? Hallelujah.